You know, it's wonderful. You know, as an eight-year-old boy, I was in love with Cinderella. <laughs> And, and I feel like you've just kind of walked out of my fantasies. Would and you like just... to be my prince child? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that brings me to the first question. She's such a fabled heroine. How do you make her a real person? Or do you, do you try and make her a real person? Well, you know, uh, it's just basically to think of a past, go back to the little girl's dreams. You know, when we all little girls thought about uh, Cinderella, sorry, how beautiful it ends, and are dreaming about the prince charming on the white horse, taking them somewhere, uh, us somewhere away. So this is basically going, yeah, back to childhood. So you enjoy it? I love it. It's just so endearing. It is so loving. And, and you know, uh, the, the character of it, but really the goodness of it, it's, it's really something that I think on a daily basis we should, we should remember more often. Oh, bravo. <laughs> now, this is your second Rossini role at the Met. You had a spectacular debut with, with the Barbara Seville last year, and of course now a tenor intela, but I'm hearing rumors about your expanded repertory and you may be hanging up your spurs, as they say, with tenor intela. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's probably this going to be one of my last performances. There are a couple more uh, to go, but I, you know, it's actually very strange that I, I really debuted here with the Rossini, and again the second role is the Rossini. I don't consider myself really a sub, uh, Rossini singer. Um, I make them run, and I kind of know how it functions, the voice really wants slowly, particularly now also to yeah. go in a little bit more romantic and more melody-like yeah. uh, repertoire, so uh, could be quite some farewell. <laughs> wow, but you sing the color tour so beautifully. It's very healthy, of course, That's a lot so of work. You know that's gymnastics. <laughs> it is a but also in this piece, underestimated certainly by people who don't sing, would be yeah. the ensembles. What's isn't that a lot of work? Practice, practice, practice. It's really, I mean, it's, it's many hours. It's to look at the colleagues. It's look, you know, when I wait for the uh, entry, you know, look at the conductor. So it's sort of organization. You know, for me, I was always kind of more concerned just about me, but it sounds to me like you actually listen to everybody else. I mean, I was, it, to keep track of the, of the rhythm is what I mean, you know? No, absolutely. I mean, you know, and it's very often, it's, it's difficult because you don't hear the orchestra because you have everybody who is singing uh, around you, you know? Yeah, so yeah, you yeah, kind yeah. of really have to concentrate on a conductor, sometimes on a prompter box also, yeah, uh, you know, to get that traffic lights all in the right direction. That's great. Now, next season, you're coming back with uh, the new production that Bart Shearer is doing of Tales of Hoffman. That's as the muse Niklaus. Yes. Have you done that? Yes, I've done, but it's a long time ago. Uh, I think last time in 2003, um, and I saw already costumes. Uh, Bart showed me, I think, two weeks ago. It's very. It looks very, very exciting. It looks beautiful. Have you, have you had a chance to talk about the role and the concept? Not yet so much, no. No, uh, and I kind of uh, don't want to, you know, think too much in case I go, I think, in a, in a wrong direction. But anyway, we have a nice rehearsal time, so I'm looking very much forward Great. to that. Great. Now, you're obviously a huge star in Europe, and, and thank goodness the Met audiences are getting you more and more in this house, and they're eating you up, as they say, and it's wonderful. What do you find the differences between between a, between the houses in Europe and say the how say the Met? Talking specifically about the size, we we don't talk about that very much. Is it an issue? Do you sing differently here? You sing louder. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, more no. on the bow. <laughs> well, exactly. I mean, I have to say, I've always, all my life, really felt good in big houses. Ah. I just love to good. see that space. You know, it really relaxes me actually. When I see audience very very close, I kind of get uptight and and you know kind of nervous. But now it just it vibrates so fantastically. Yeah, it's a it's great really, acoustic it's here. Really it's wonderful. fantastic. Absolutely Do you perfect. notice that there's so many people? Do you see it? I don't um, see it. No, I don't. Actually, a couple of rows in the, in the, you know, at the beginning right. and then maybe in the first balconies, but it's right. just the feeling of it. You know, you, you feel those eyes. So, you're going to give us one of the great arias of your repertoire, the Non Pium Mesa, <laughs> but I know there's something else you'd like to say. Yes. We're live on television. <laughs> I want, to, I want to use the opportunity and say, Sveicina de Riga, Latvia, Mama Teti, Bralis, Jus Mil, Paldies, Kaskatetis. And that means for the rest of you, Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank God you. bless. And, and toi 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 for the rest of the offers. Thank, Thank you very much.